Sam from Jessica. There we go. I'd just like to introduce Sam from uh, Jessica. She's kindly um, agreed to help run the demonstration. She is based in Australia, so it's uh, quite early in the morning for her. But um, over to you, Sam. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Fran. Um, yes, as per the introduction, my name is Sam. I am the Head of Customer Success at Jessica, and I will be running you through uh, tonight's session. So hopefully everybody has had time to have a look at the videos that Fran has kindly already distributed. Um, they do go through two of the sections that we'll be going through this evening. Um, the other one we'll be going through is the membership setup. So the first one, I am actually just going to walk you through the videos themselves, but I will be talking through them. Um, but you can use these as reference points at any time. You can go back, look at them at your own pace, hit pause. You can follow along as you're doing it yourself. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Just one moment. Thank you, Fred. Uh, okay. Okay, hoping you can now see my screen that has swim miles on it. Yep. Thank you, Fran. Okay, so at any time, as Fran said, if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat. Um, the ladies will be monitoring, answering your questions as we go along. If there's anything that needs my attention that I will not be answering along the way, just because of going through the actual process itself, then um, I will be notified and we can answer your question. So this is the video that I referred to earlier. This is around um, setting up the, the first step, which is activating your Just Go subscription trial version. After you've set up your trial version, you then do need to go through and activate the full version. Um, this is important because the trial version will only last for 14 days and then you'll actually lose access to certain areas within your, uh, your menu. So there are two clubs uh, that have gone through the process of the trial version and then not gone through yet and completed the full setup. So we just need to make sure um, we do go the whole way through. Uh, on saying that there are also only 20 clubs to date that have actually completed this process in full. So it is really important that you complete the first step because without doing that, you can't move on to the rest of the steps. So everybody should have their login details to your Just Go portal as a club administrator. If you don't, please contact Fran. She'll be able to sort you out there. So the first thing is heading to the menu, top left side. Um, that is something that you'll get sick of hearing in all of my training videos, top left side menu. We're going down to the learn more tiles. As you can see, that is highlighted on my screen there. And when we click on that, we've got this nice green screen here. So what we're doing is we're clicking on the pricing overview at the top, and then that refreshes to a new screen. As we scroll down, we see Just Go Essential in the middle, and that is the one that we're looking at. So as I said, right now, what we're doing is if you haven't already activated the trial version, you need to go through, activate that trial version. The Just Go Essential is the one that you need to select. <clears throat> On the next screen, you are asked information about yourself. Once you have entered this in, you can't actually change it. So what happens is when you go through the next step, some of these fields will be pre-populated. So do make sure the information on this screen is correct. And then when you've entered everything in, you can click on the sign up button down the bottom. And then when that happens, we're redirected to a starting page, uh, get started page. So that's the first part of the first step that we need to do. So it's kind of step A and step B. So we've activated the trial version. It's now the important part of going through and activating the full version. And again, menu top left side. But now what you'll see is there are more menu options. Um, so there's more tiles in the menu here. And that's because we've activated our subscription. So once we scroll down to the bottom, we can see upgrade club. And that's a tile that wasn't there before. So you need to click on the Upgrade Club tile. That will then take you to another one of our little green screens. Looks pretty much, oops, my apologies, you do have to click on Change Plan. So we can see there that it tells us we have got the uh, free trial. So that's highlighted across here. Uh, and there are 13 days left. So if you don't activate within the 14-day period, we will have to do it through. Uh, so Just Go will need to be contacted. Um, and we'll have to sort you out from there. So it is a bit of a complicated process, so important that you get it done in those 14 days. 
also because your members will want to purchase memberships prior to that 14 day period expiring. So once you click on change plan, we're back on that screen that we saw before, um, but now we're going to click on upgrade plan. So still within the Just Go Essential um, tile, but we click on upgrade plan and we're actually asked for more information about our club. So again, as with the previous screen, there are some fields here that cannot be edited after they've been entered. So please make sure the information you're entering here is correct. Um, there will be some fields that are already completed based on your club's profile as well. Um, and so these fields, as I was referring to earlier, when I said your details, these are your details that are populated from the previous uh, setup screen. So once you've done everything, click on the continue button and that will take you to the cart. So we'll see that there's an amount, there's a value here um, and it's telling us the total amount here. If you are going through this process, you should then also be contacting Fran for your discount code. And what you'll do is enter that discount code into the discount field here and then click apply. And what you'll see happen is a 100% discount will be applied to the cart. So you are not actually being asked to pay for anything. It is covered by Swim Wales. Um, when you have entered the code and it's back down to zero, um, you can scroll down to the bottom, which I seem to do very slow in this video. And then you can click on the continue button. So the next screen here, it's uh, asking you for a payment method. So although your cart value was zero pound, um, you do need to enter in payment details. And this is actually if there are any disputes made by any of your members for payments that they've made through the portal. So what happens is um, standard process, if somebody disputes a payment on their credit card um, statement, that goes through to their bank. Their bank will then dispute it with Stripe and we'll get to the stripe set up in a bit, but this is the information that will be used to recover any funds that are actually um, uh, successfully disputed by your members. So you will be notified. So uh, just go will be notified if any of your members dispute um, any of their payments. So we'll get notified, we will notify Swim Wales and yourselves, and then hopefully come to a resolution with your members. But there is an amount that will be sitting in a holding um, account by Stripe and that's what they're going to use this information for. So you either need to enter bank information or credit card information um, and then when you are done you can click on the continue button down the bottom and that is it. So as we see the process itself is not hard, it's nice and simple, there may be steps that you don't understand why you're being asked for that information, hopefully now you do understand, um, but that's the entire first step completed. So once you've done this, you can then move on to the rest of the setup so that your members can actually purchase memberships in how many days, friend? Not many days, a week? Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so that, that's the whole first, thank you, friend. <laughs> I just, that, was it a week for no. memberships to open? Yeah, next, on the yeah. 20th, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, okay. So that's everything to do with the, the Just Go sign up. Um, were there any questions that I needed to be across? Yeah, we've got a few questions in the chat box. Um, Gareth asks, are the address and numbers private to other members? Which numbers, sorry? Um, I presume in terms of, Gareth, are you able to clarify in terms of the address and numbers? Yeah, so just for the, for the club setup, it asks for the address. Um, I put the leisure centre, but obviously I wouldn't want any posts going there. I was wasn't sure if I put my own address, is that visible to any other members? Uh, no, the information that you enter into this area here is um, can only be viewed by the Just Go Finance team. OK, great. Thank you very much. No problem. Brilliant. Thanks, Gareth. And then Neris has asked, is the email that you need to provide the club email address or the club administrator's email address? Does it... Uh, Either is okay. It's the email address that JustGo will use if there are any questions around your subscription. So we do find that sometimes clubs like to upgrade their subscription to get some of the, uh, wow, that was awful English, to get some of the better functionality that's available. Um, so if in the event that anybody does anything to their subscription, it'll be the email address that is the best one for us to use as a contact. 
Brilliant. So that can be, yeah, if there's a generic club uh, contact email, so it's secretary at, treasurer at, then pop that one in. Otherwise, just the general club email is fine. Brilliant. So it doesn't have to be personal. Okay, brilliant. Um, and then next question, um, can you get to this activation stage even when you have a yellow question mark against the club profile, profile and affiliation stage? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you can. Okay, so what that is, is um, it's saying that your club profile is not completely set up yet. So there are certain stages in setting up your club profile and they are your contact information, your subscription and your club affiliation. So that, that has no bearing on your ability to complete the first stage. Brilliant. Okay, that's lovely. And Beverly's just asked if you're able to change contact details when um, officers of uh, within the club change at a later date. And yes, you can, can't you? Yes, you can, yeah. You'll just need to contact support at Just Go and we'll be able to update that for you. Okay. Okay, um, I'm just going to switch... Um, switch my videos over now. So first stage done, we're going to move on to the second stage and that is the Stripe setup. Uh, this one was actually a little bit interesting for me because it appears that the Stripe sign up form is different across all of the countries. So um, just bear with me a moment. Then I'll get Stripe up. So the reason we need the Stripe account to be linked to Just Go is so that when individual members within each club make their renewals to Swim Wales is that that payment goes directly to Swim Wales as opposed to clubs having to collect it and then make a separate payment. So that Stripe account just means that that facility is enabled to all clubs and it's just streamlined. Thank you, Fran. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, go back to sharing screen. Make sure it's the right one. Fran, can you see my yes, video screen? Beautiful. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so this is the second stage. So we've gone through the Just Go subscription, um, enabling, moving from trial version to full version. Now that we've done that, we have access to another tile as well, which is the payment setup tile. So again, menu, top left corner, we're going to go and look for the payment setup tile. Um, so that is sort of down towards the bottom there. What you're going to see firstly is your club name up on the top right. So you will generally see on quite a lot of the screens, your club name is going to appear here. So one of the first things you'll notice is I'm in the wrong club. Um, or hopefully the correct club, but just in case, that is where you can check. So when this screen loads, anywhere in the database where you haven't already gone through um, and started the setup, you're going to see a green screen that's going to say hi, whatever your name is, and then it's going to give you like a couple of cues just letting you know how to set up this area. Um, and in this one, we've got a let's get started button. So as soon as we click on this, it's going to ask us to confirm that's the club we're setting up for. Then it's going to take us to a form. So this is Stripe. This is the payment gateway. As Fran said, when members make payments through the portal, it's going through the Stripe gateway. Um, what we need to do here is let Stripe know all of our details. So that's about us. There's an individual who becomes the account owner. That is because this is almost exactly the same as a bank account itself. So payments are going to be made into here. So the same strict process that you have to go through to set up a bank account, you're going to have to go through to set up the Stripe account if you don't have one already. Um, so it means that they need to verify an individual so that that is a person who becomes responsible for the account. And they also need to verify your business, which is your club as well. So we need to make sure the information that we enter as part of this setup is as accurate as possible. And that um, we understand that you may be asked to provide supporting documents. So they may be, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to verify you as a person. Um, 
So that means they'll ask you potentially to provide something like a driver's license or a passport. So any information you are asked to provide is done through their secure website. It has, it's not just through email, you'll be notified through email, but you actually have to log into the portal, which is secure um, and upload any documents that you're being asked for. So that may be about you personally, or it may be about the actual club itself if they weren't able to verify it. So they do have a verification process in place. And that means they are checking the information as we go through, I'll show you where you're entering in your um, you as the individual, um, your information, and they're checking that information off uh, the records that they have available. So if they're government records, that's what they're checking from. So we need to make sure when we enter information, it is as per any documents that you might be able to provide as verification, should you be asked. Um, so if you already have a Stripe account, what's going to happen here on this first screen is as soon as you enter the email address that's associated with the existing account, Stripe is going to pick up. It knows that there is an account that exists. So it's not going to go and create a new one. It's going to ask you for the login details. Because I'm entering one that um, actually doesn't exist, it doesn't have an account attached to it yet, it's going to take me through the actual setup process. Uh, the email address that is attached when you first come in, so we see that my personal work email was already in there, that's on my profile. So that profile that I was logged into in JustGo, the email address attached to it has automatically populated on this screen. So you can change that, just highlight it, delete it, type over the top of it, um, and then click on the continue button. So because I don't have an account, it's asking me for the pass, it's asking me for a password. So it says at the top, create your free Stripe account. If it was connected to an existing account, it would say enter your password or log into your existing account, something along those lines. So after you set a password, and it will tell you if your password is not strong enough, uh, we click on continue. That then takes us slowly to this screen here. So I've had to change it because I'm in Australia and if I needed to put a mobile number in, but uh, you will see that it's asking you for your mobile number. The reason for this is you need to be able to um, set up two-step authentication on the account. So when you enter in your mobile number, it will you'll click on send a text button. It will then send you a text message and it will be a six digit code as we see here. You'll enter the verification code in. Once you enter that verification code in, you'll then be taken to a screen that says your account is secured. So it's accepted your mobile number, you've entered in the right verification, and then we have a download code option here. So these are backup codes. Like anything, um, hopefully everyone has like two-step authentication set up on most of their accounts. You should have backup codes available. So this uh, download code area and that code that's up on the screen, that is there so that in the event that you lose the mobile number that's connected to the account or you no longer have access to that mobile number, it means that you'll still be able to log into your account because what happens is every time you log into your account, you're sent a text message, you have to enter that code. Without that number, you're not going to be able to get in. So we definitely download the codes, save them to your computer, um, keep them secure, let anybody else in the club know if they need to. Um, and then we go on to about your business. So everything's referred to as business. This is your club information. So you just need to enter in your club information um, and then click on the continue button. And then we're asked for some more information. So here you wanna make sure that your club name is correct. So the name that will be populated is the one that is in the database for Just Go. So if there's any variation to that, please make sure you're updating it. Uh, enter in your VAT if you have one, uh, your phone number and your website. So understanding some clubs may not have a website, even if you have a social media link. So for Facebook page, you can enter the URL, pop that into the business website section here. And then we see the product description is auto-populated with using Go membership to collect payments. So for those of you not aware, Just Go was previously branded as Go membership. So we've still got Go membership in the Stripe form. Uh, onto the next page and we have business representatives. So this is hopefully the person that's setting up the form. Uh, this will be your personal information. So I have gone through this process plenty of times, set up plenty 
me of fake accounts just for testing purposes. And then what happens is almost instantly I get an email that says, we could not verify your details. The one account that I set up that has my actual details, it went through straight away. So we just, as I said before, we need to make sure that we're entering uh, information per any documents that we would be able to use to verify ourselves. And then we won't be asked to verify ourselves. So just update any of the information, um, enter your address, enter your phone number, and then click continue. So then it's going to ask us for uh, any more business or any business owners. So that's any individual who owns 25% or more of, and then it will say your club name. So if there are no business owners, then just click on continue with no owners. The next one is not too dissimilar. And that is business directors. So any individuals who are members of the governing board of your club, you can add them or you can continue with no directors. The next screen is going to ask you for business executives. So you, the administrator who's setting up the account, you are listed as one of those executives. So you can see your information will already be there, can't be changed because you've entered that on a previous screen. You can add any other executives. Um, for the club as well. So click on add an executive, enter their details. You'll need the same information on them that you had to enter for yourself as well. So if you have that information, by all means, enter it. Um, otherwise, click on the done continue button down the bottom, and then that will take you to the next screen. And this is, and this actually took me a while to work out how to get to the next screen by entering in proper account information. But this is your bank details, so your club bank details. So deposits, uh, payments that are made through the system, what account are they being deposited into? This information you need to make sure is correct. So you need to enter in your sort code, account number, and then confirm your account number. And then it will take you through providing you entry and valid information. It will then take you to the next screen which is asking you for customer support details. So the information that you enter here is statement descriptor. So when somebody's looking at their statement, what are they going to be seeing? So hopefully something nice and clear so that we don't have any payment disputes so people understand what the payment was for. So it will be auto-populated with your website. I'm not actually sure why it does that, but it does it. So you can just take your website details out update it with your club name. And then the field below has got a shortened descriptor. So in there, you can put in say an acronym for the club if you want to. Confirm the phone number and then click continue. So now we're reviewing information. So it's going to show us each of those sections that we've gone through. Um, and we can see, we can edit them. There's an edit pencil on the top right of any of those boxes. And if you have forgotten to enter information on any of those areas, we can see here, this is highlighted red and it says missing required information update. So in this case, I think I forgot the postcode on, yeah, postcode on my, um, on my address details. So once I updated those, I still have the option to add somebody new. So if you've come to this point and gone, oh, actually I do want to add somebody, you can add somebody else from here. Um, your bank details will be shown at the bottom. If you're happy with it, then you can just click done and then it redirects you out to um, back into your Just Go portal and it says set up complete. So we've gone from let's get started to set up complete. So once you see that screen, you know that you've done your Stripe setup. That means that payments can successfully be made through the portal when you go through and set up your memberships. So that's two steps. Fran, questions? Um, I'm just answering the uh, majority. Um, Neris has asked, will the extra business executives added have access to the Stripe account? No, they will not. They will not. You can add additional um, users to your Stripe profile. So I will send you, Fran, a second video, which actually goes through Stripe account maintenance. So guys, if you want to add somebody, if you want to go and venture on your own tonight, maybe, you can go to stripe.com, use the login details that you used uh, to set up your account, and you'll be able to get to the settings area and then business users, and you'll be able to add additional people from there. But I'll send you a video that details the process. Okay. It is always a good idea to have somebody extra on the account, just so there's two people within the club who have got access, 
in the event that there's a change of committee. It's always safe. Okay, brilliant, thank you. And then Mark has asked, um, whose details uh, primarily need to go into the strike, Stripe setup? So that would be the person, I suppose, currently acting as the club admin. Yes, club admin, club treasurer. I'm not sure entirely what positions you would have in your clubs, but any um, anyone that you would deem in the club that would be responsible for finances or the overall um, admin of the club. So it's entirely up to you who you actually attach there. Okay. Brilliant, thank you. And I think I think that's it at the moment. Um, oh, there was a question about transaction charges when club members are playing their paying their affiliation fee, the Stripe transaction charge. That um, they're inquiring about who covers that cost, whether it's club member or Swim Wales. Yeah, so that is the um, whoever the payment is being made out to. So uh, I do apologise, I'm not actually sure what your, um, your rates are, but you would, we would be able to source them after this and, and distribute them though. Yeah. Right, I imagine that they, they would have passed that information on. I'm just not sure where it is. Okay. So it, it is paid. Uh, so what will happen is the, the member will see a total amount and then the fees will come out of that total amount. So you'll receive the portion minus the fee. So it is the club or uh, Swim Wales who are, who are yeah. taking that fee. Fine. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Okay. All right. No other questions? Not so far. Okay. We will move over to the membership side then. Um, so once you've set up your, your uh, sorry, activated your Disco subscription and you have set up your Stripe account, you are now ready to go through and complete your membership setup. Once you've completed your membership setup and activated your memberships, this is the point that your members will be able to actually purchase a membership. So if you haven't done the first step, you won't have access to the rest of the steps. So you won't be able to see the other tiles to get the payment set up or to do the membership um, set up. Um, once you've done the Stripe set up, that's great, but you still need to go through and actually set up your membership. So your members need to be able to actually purchase a membership. So I'm going to share my screen again. Sorry, Fran. Oh, sorry, Sam. I was just going to say that um, in terms of what clubs have had access to, I've not sent them the sort of the, the user guide for the membership setup yet. Um, so I was basically waiting for them to get to this stage in terms of like getting the activation completed and the stripe. And then that would then put them in a good position to be able to activate their membership setup. So in terms of um, user guides, I, after this session tonight, I will be sending those out. Um, so don't worry if you don't follow everything now with Sam when she goes through it, you will have a user guide as well. Excellent, thank you, Fred. And the video will go with that as well, Fran. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, this time I'm doing a little bit differently because I'm not actually using the video. I am using the database itself. So um, generally when you do log into your profile, you'll either end up on the My Profile area or you'll end up on the Membership area. So my favorite term so far, menu, top left corner, that's where we're going. So when you click on that, we're scrolling down to the Membership Setup area. So what you'll see when this loads is membership templates have been created for you. So this is like a shell. Um, yeah, they're, they're like shells of memberships. So the first thing we see is there are memberships at the top and then there are squad memberships down the bottom. So understanding that squad memberships will not be relevant to everybody, that's fine. All memberships we can see here are actually inactive. So that means nobody can purchase them. So if you leave them inactive, nobody will ever be able to purchase them. Um, or if you definitely do not need the squad memberships, you can delete them. So we have a little icon to the far right side and we have the delete option. Uh, we have active, but we'll get into that once we've done one of the memberships. So as I said, if you don't need the squad memberships, you can just go ahead and delete those. After you have deleted them, we can't put them back in there for you. So just make sure you are deleting any that you actually want to delete 
Um, otherwise, you're going to go through the setup process from scratch, which means you are left with just an empty, um, empty set of fields that you have to fill everything in for. So to explain that a bit better, um, what we'll do is go into one of the memberships. So as I said, these are a shell. They have been created. They're like a template. Um, they're based on Swimwhale's setup. So we click on the edit button. And we can see that we're loaded into a screen where a lot of information is already filled out for us. So the first thing is the name. So the names are the same for every club um, in the template. So this information can be updated. We then have the about this membership field. So also editable fields, we have color and classification. So it's important to understand how this translates to the member. So it's all well and good to have a look at it in its template, but how does this translate? What does it look like? So we have a preview button up on the top right hand side. We also have one right down at the bottom of the screen as well. So when we click on the preview button, it's going to show us what it looks like to the member. So this is important for you to understand the information that you're entering in on this template. Where is this going to show for the member? What does it look like? So this is the membership tile. So when you click on the membership tab from your profile and you can view all of the memberships that are available to you, this is what you're going to be looking at, a series of tiles which will be available based on any restrictions that have been set up. So if you've got uh, restrictions for say age restrictions, you can say only people over the age of X can see these ones. This will determine what tiles can be seen. Um, so the first thing is the name. So membership name over here translates down into this, uh, the bottom section here. The duration is down the bottom as well. We have membership benefits, which we'll see further down in our template. And then we have this more info button here. So when we click on that, it tells us about membership and we've got this spiel here. This is part of your template, and that is the information that we see over on the about this membership field. So you can update the information that is, you know, both the club name and the about this membership, and this is where it translates to. We have got an image, which you can see at the top. Um, we can see the price up the top as well. So what we'll do is we'll start to go through and edit this information here. Um, as I said, you can update the club, uh, the membership name, you can update the details, so the about, so people understand who this particular membership is for. That colour, as we saw that particular tile was red, so this one is has been by default set to red. Classification is something that you absolutely do not change. So what this is doing is telling the system this membership is uh, competitive and so the system goes and looks for the swim whales competitive membership and it automatically applies it to that membership so what happens is when somebody gets to the checkout they'll see that the club membership is in there and the swim whales membership is in there so that's an automatic process you don't need to do anything except just not touch the classification that's there uh, the image, really simple to upload an image, just click on upload photo, it will take you to a pop up screen so that you can uh, select any, um, any image from your device. Um, how long the membership is valid for, so these are all default as part of your template, as are the start dates, so they're all set to start on the 1st of April. As we scroll down, so if you do click on hide membership duration, if you remember back on that preview, we've got one year membership down here. So if you click on hide duration, it won't show this particular line here. It will just have the club name, uh, the membership name there. So moving down to the pricing, this is really important. So price field, this is how much you as a club collect for this particular membership. So this is not the total price that they'll pay. This is just the club portion. So if you, um, if it's 139 pounds, 100 of it that you're collecting, you'll put in 100 into this field here. Um, and that tells the system that the member should be charged $100 at the club level when they select this membership. That classification linking from above, that's going to tell the system which Swim Wales membership to bring into the cart. So that's why it's important that we don't touch that. What we then have is display price settings. So this is back on the preview at the top on the left-hand side, it had the price in the corner. This is what we're telling the system to show in that corner. And the reason for that is if this is a hundred pound and then we have 39 from Swim Wales. 
we don't want to show the member 100 and then have them get to the checkout and then be charged 139 because it's, you know, it's not a nice surprise that anybody wants because I saw a membership for $100. So we want to make sure that we keep the memberships on or change it if it's not already there to display alternative price. So display actual price will show on the tile the price that we've entered into the price field. Display um, alternative price, we then get to enter in whatever price we wanted to show. So this is a manual calculation and we have to type in 139. So now what's going to happen when we click on preview is we can see 139 up in the top left. So that means when the member's looking at this membership, they see 139, they get to the checkout, they're charged 139. So there's no surprises. We like no surprises. You also do have a display price range. So you can enter a minimum and a maximum. So this is good if there are discounts that are applied that you want to let people know about. Um, not sure what type of discounts would be popular with your clubs, but it is an option that's available there. So again, you can enter in um, the price range. So if we put in 139 to 150 and then look at the preview, we can see that there's now a price range. So they know that there's a price range. They won't actually know what theirs is until they get to the checkout though. So as I said, display alternative price is the ideal one. Um, then we move down, do you need to charge tax? So if you are registered, then you will need to, otherwise you can leave that on no. Membership benefits, when we're looking back at that um, preview tile, which we'll do now, we've got benefits here. Sometimes all the benefits don't fit on the front tile. So when you click on more info, it opens out to the rest of them. So these benefits have been preloaded um, from Swim Wales. So you do still have the option to add your own though. So there might be some club benefits for this particular membership that you feel is important that the members understand. There might be access to facilities. It could be access to coaches. I'm not sure what it might be, but whatever is relevant for your club, you can add a new benefit by clicking on the add a new benefit button. Nice and self-explanatory. Type in your club benefit. Get the space. And then there's a green tick box over to the far right side. So when we click on that, it saves our club benefit. We can then move it. So if I decide my club benefits, the most important thing that everybody should know about this membership, I can just keep moving it up the screen. And so what happens now when I click on preview, club benefits at the top. So you don't, you don't need to delete any of the ones that are there. The ones that have been pre-populated for you are relevant. Um, they're relevant to the members. So it's best that you keep those ones there, but you absolutely can add any of your own uh, club benefits in there as well. You can move them up and down the screen or you can click on the um, remove button or the edit pencil to change any of the detail within. Um, so these are all the fields that if you delete any of your memberships, and you didn't mean to, you're going to have to go through and set these up again. So just, just be very careful when you are on the front screen looking at your memberships. We then come down to the restrictions, discounts and surcharges. So this is where we can say who should be able to see this particular membership. So if we want to restrict it to anybody, um, we can also say who or when a discount should apply. So we can use um, date-based fields, we can use age-based fields or membership-based fields. And then the same with surcharges, who should get a surcharge or when should one be applied? So if we look at um, restrictions, so one of the more popular ones is generally around age, um, age restrictions. So what we can do is click on add a new purchase rule and then give our rule a description. So when it comes to the restrictions, um, the description cannot be seen by anybody. It's just for administrative purposes only. So we, we're saying this is an age-based rule. We then click on the add a rule button. This is where we start to see all the different rules that are available. Um, so we have member age rules between an age older than, younger than, or a specific age. Um, club profile, so based on their gender, um, based on profile fields. So profile fields are fields that we set up through um, if you have upgraded to the professional side of the subscription, you can set up fields to be answered by members. Um, and that's, that's what we would use here. 
We can look at their memberships. So we can say if they've held a membership, if they've never held a membership, if they are new to the club, if they've previously held this type with another club, there's a whole range of, um, of different rules that we can create in here based on their role within the club. And then we've got the date range, date range ones here. So if I make my age base, I'll scroll back up the top um, and say that they have to be older than, and then we have these fields here. So we're going to change this to current date and say, based on the current date, the member is aged. If I say 18 or over, the way that these rules work is if you can answer yes to, or yes, it's applicable to the question, so the rule, then it means that this rule will apply to your members. So is the member currently aged 18 or over? Yes then this membership will be available to them. If they're not, then no, this membership will not be available to them. Um, so when, when we do apply any kind of age-based rules or any kind of rules to our memberships, it's important to understand that if you as an administrator go to your profile membership page to have a look at what these memberships look like after you've activated them, you are only going to see the ones that you meet the criteria for. So even though you're an administrator, when you head over to that membership area, you're looking at them as though you're a member. So you won't see everything. You'll only see what you should be able to see based on your, your profile and any rules that you've set up. So if you're happy with your rule, you can click on save. And then we can see we've got our age-based rule here. So the same applies for the discounts and the surcharges. Those areas are exactly the same. You have the add new discount rule. You then give it a description. So the description in this area will only be seen by yourselves, the administrators. Explanation is what will be shown at the checkout. So when a member purchases a membership, they get to the checkout, they see that the discount has been applied, they can click on a question mark that explains what the discount is. Whatever you type into this explanation field is what's going to be displayed to the member. So whatever you type in the description, it's fine. It can just be short text, just so you know as an administrator what that rule is. But explanation should be nice and clear so that people understand why they have received a discount or a surcharge. When doing discounts and surcharges, you can enter amount. If I enter in uh, 50, that can either be the value of the discount or if I click on this tick box, it is the percentage of the discount. So I am saying uh, they're either going to get 50 pound off their membership. So that's the discount amount, not what they'll pay, but what they'll be discounted. Or I'm saying they'll get 50% off that particular membership. So entirely up to you if you want to do your discounts, but that is um, how you can do them value or percentage based. Again, we have the, although you enter in the information into these fields here explaining what the discount is for, it is important that you tell the system what the discount is for. Because if we don't click on this add new rule button here, we've basically just got a blank discount. Um, so without an actual rule created, the system will go, looks like there's a discount here, it's for 50%. There's no criteria, which means everybody meets the criteria. So everybody gets 50% off. So really important that you actually create the rule itself, make sure the pop-up comes up, you go through, select um, whatever the, um, the rule might be. So if it's membership based, we can select any of our memberships. I'm saying if they've ever had this membership before, then they can have 50% off. So it's, it is quite simple to create the rules. You may have, um, if you do have discounts or surcharges, you may have some complexity around them. If you do, please reach out to Fran. Fran can reach out to us and we can help you make sure that they get set up correctly. Um, once you're happy with everything in your restrictions, discounts and surcharges, you can check back again on your preview, make sure it's looking how you want it to, reads how you want it to. And if you're happy with it, click save. So you're going to go through that process for all of them. Um, and again, just quickly, the price field here is the price that you have entered as your portion of the fee. That's only going to show your amount. <clears throat> so not the full amount that will be charged. So just get back out of there. So we can see I've, I've done the first one. I've still got to do the rest of them. So as I said, they are shells that have been created for you. 
you can use those, update those, make them relevant to your club, to your members. And if you need to, you do have add new membership at the top here. So if there is an additional membership that you need to create, so if you've, um, if you've got a different fee that you charge based on age, um, so for club competitive, what you'll do is say, although the Swim Wales portion doesn't change, the club portion changes. So you can either create discount rules based on age. So you can say the total amount is that we charge is 200. But if you are a junior, then you're only going to get charged 160. So you can create an age-based rule that says if you're under this age, then you get a 40 pound discount. Um, the alternative is you create a restriction that says this membership is only available if you're over 18. And then we create a new membership at the discounted price, which is only available if they are under 18. So if you need to create a new one, we click on add new membership. And we're taken to the same setup screen as before, except now we see everything is blank. So this is where you'll need to populate the information, the name, the about, the color, very important, make sure the, uh, the classification is the correct classification. So we need to make sure the correct Swim Wales membership is coming in for this. And then the image, the date range, the price and everything else that we saw before. So you do have the ability to create your own memberships if you want to. As I said, you can either create discounts on existing memberships to cater for age-based changes in the prices, um, or you can create restrictions so that only 18 year olds and the over see this membership and then a second one for the younger ones. Entirely up to you. Once you are happy with all of your memberships, that's great, fantastic. You need to make them active. If you don't make them active, your members cannot see them. They cannot purchase them. So where we were earlier, we have the icon on the far right hand side. When we click on that, we've got delete or active. Again, be really careful when you're doing this. Make sure if you want it active, you click active. Unfortunately, if you click delete, we cannot recover it. So you'll have to start again. So we click on active and then we will see this membership is now active. So we can see these ones down here as, I've got to stop clicking that. These ones down here are still inactive and then our top one is active. So when you're happy with your setup, go through and make them all active. If you're happy with your setup, but you're, you just want some reassurance to make sure it's correct, contact Swim Wales. They'll be able to go through that setup for you. Make sure everything is as you want it to be. They'll probably come back with questions, just making sure you want this here and this to say that. Notice that you put that there. Notice that you didn't change the price range, whatever it may be. Um, especially if you have any rules set up, um, there will obviously be a bit of back and forth to understand what were you hoping to achieve with this rule? This is what's going to happen. And then when it's all good to go and you're happy, you can just change them all to active and then that's it, you're good to go. So, Brett, questions? Okay, so there's been a few questions regarding um, what would happen or what would need to be displayed um, if clubs are only collecting the Swim Wales affiliation fee and they're not charging a club annual fee. So if it's only, say for instance, for club competitive and it's 39 pounds, what do they select and what price do they put where? <laughs> so what they'll do is you will not put a price into the price field because you are not collecting anything as a club, but your display price should be 39 because that is how much the member will be charged. So the member's still going to come through your club membership, select um, club competitive, and they're still going to have to pay 39 pounds to swim whales. So we don't enter a price into the price field. So the system knows you as a club are not charging anything. The member can see that when they get to the cart, it will be 39. And then when they actually get into the cart, they'll see the club fee was zero and swim whales was 39. So they would se se select the display alternative price. They wouldn't just display actual price for it to pull no. through at 39. Okay. No, because what will happen if you click on display actual price, it's reading that price field. So it will actually say zero dollars, uh, ah. zero pounds. So then you'll get to the, the checkout and then all of a sudden it's gone from zero to 39. So always go display alternative price, um, but what you charge and if you charge nothing, then it's zero and then enter in what the swim miles portion is. Excellent. Okay. And then also it, um, Gareth is asking regarding Stripe, going back to Stripe, um, is asking for a company's house registration number to set up. 
a company's house registration number? I think I've read in the um, setup guide that we would need to just put um, eight zeros to come through that section. Is that slightly different in? No, that, that would be correct. Yeah. Eight, zeros. Correct. Uh, eight or 10. Let me verify that for you. I think oh. it was. I think it was written as 10, but when I did it, it was actually eight. Oh, okay. But it's just right. worth double checking that. Thanks. Yeah, I'll double check and get back to you. Yeah, Beverly's just confirmed she's done it without the, the number as well. Excellent. Any other questions? I think um, just. Uh, oh, in terms of the um, the rules that you were just talking about at the end there, the swim whales categories, those are all in terms of discounts and um, the rules, they're yeah. already preset, aren't they? This is for club, the club portion that you've just gone through now, if clubs want to make any uh, discounts or rules. Yep, that's correct. So any discounts that are available at the Swim Wales level have been built into uh, the Swim Wales memberships. So they will apply as and when required. Um, when you're setting up your club discounts, you only have to worry about discounts that apply to your club memberships. Nothing to do with the Swim Wales portion. That's already taken care of. I think that's it for um, questions so far. Just as another one pops in. Oh, can you please recirculate the water fees? That's the, the club membership category fees. Yeah, I can do that. No problem. And if clubs do have volunteers, you can either ask um, them to buy their membership fee and you can reimburse them or the club can actually purchase the volunteer membership on their behalf. So both options are possible. Okay. Okay, hey, well, I mean, that's it from a setup point of view. Um, I say that's it. I know that we have covered a lot. It's been close to an hour. Um, the, um, I don't think there's, there's nothing really to go through from here that is really important for your setup. Um, there are plenty of other areas within the database. So you'll see when you head to the menu, there's quite a lot of information available to you. So underneath your My Club area, um, just so you're aware, if you are a member logging into the database as somebody without any form of administrative access, the only tiles you will see are those nine that sit underneath the member area. So they are relevant to members only. As a club administrator, you have the additional tiles that sit underneath the My Club header. So all of these tiles here, we can see you've got quite a lot of functionality. There are quite a lot of things that you can do, but from a setup point of view to enable your members to come into the database and purchase a membership and for you to be able to get the payment for it, that is all those first uh, three steps. So go through, do your Club Plus, uh, your Just Go subscription, do your Stripe setup, do your membership setup, and you're officially good to go. There's plenty of other little things that we can tweak within here, um, and there'll be um, support documentation provided to you from Swim Wales. One of those is around emails. So to understand the way that the system works is there are set, there are a set of um, system triggered emails in the database. So it's they'll be triggered by an event of some type. So it is somebody's purchased a membership, they're going to receive an automatic email. They're going to receive one that confirms their membership. They're going to receive a payment receipt. Um, when somebody um, purchases, say, an event ticket, so there is an event portal here, but it's just an example, um, There'll, there'll be automatic triggers for, uh, for emails to go out. When somebody's membership is coming due, there is an automatic set of emails that will go out as well. So there's quite a few different uh, emails that go out and they are all through um, email management. So we can see down the bottom of my menu here, we've got an email management tile. So what you have the ability to do is create your own template. So that means the way that it looks and also the content in each of those emails. So this is getting into the, you know, really starting to configure and tailor the database to be specific to yourselves. Um, we're not going to go into that one tonight. It is quite its own little um, rabbit hole because there is a lot that you can do within there. Um, the 
as I said, the, the guides support documentation will be sent out on that, but the three main steps of the setup have been done. Fran, I just saw a family discount question. Mm -hmm. Do you want to, do you um, want to cover that? Um, I don't, as far as I'm aware, we haven't configured family discount at present. It's something I think we were going to look into once set up. So I'm not sure it's configured yet, but if you wanted to explain about it. Yeah, can you can you give me an example of what a discount might be at the club level? Like what a standard family discount would be? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Victoria, can you help with this one? Are there any offered at present? I don't... My understanding is this is for the club membership that Susanna's asking. So if they had two children or three children, the more children they had in within the club, would be offered a subsidy on their club membership as opposed to their Swim Wales membership. All oh, right, okay. Okay, all right, I, I can quickly cover that one if you want me to. I mean, I say quickly, it's yeah. not always quick. Um, so I guess the first thing to explain is the any discounts, it, it's a discount off the existing membership. So members will still be purchasing from this screen here. They will only have the options of this screen here. So I'm just going to uh, actually, you know, I'll leave it as it is. So I've got um, a hundred pound in my club competitive here. So I'm going to go over to configure family membership. So across the top here where we've got add new, we've got configure family. So as I said, it's important to understand the memberships that they'll be purchasing will actually be from that front screen there. But what we're doing is telling the system there's a discount that's available and what the configuration of that is. So I'm going to skip past the standard setup stuff. So membership name, so you maybe call it family membership. It will appear as a tile for members. Um, description, colour, we've got not the greatest range of colours, but there are colours that you can change your tiles to and then add an image. So what we're going to do is say the first thing is combination, age and type. Your combination of discounts might be based on member age. So then we'll define what is um, an adult and therefore what is a junior. Uh, or we might do type and say it's based on the particular membership they buy, which means not every membership is available for the discount. So we might say we're only offering a discount on if it's the club competitive um, and maybe, I don't know, club training memberships. So we're saying only those memberships are eligible for discounts. And then we tell the system what the combination is. So we have here add new combination. And we can say, so we've got the option of the memberships that we've selected above. So we can say if the club competitive is between um, two members and three members, and club training is, or yeah, club training is between one and two, and then we can say what the minimum family members is. So what we're doing is saying, if there are two of the competitive members and one or two of the club training members with a minimum family members of three, we can either have a fixed price or a percentage discount. So we might say there's a 30% discount if that is the combination. If your combination is a little bit more open than that, um, and we say it's just if club competitive is between, uh, say, two and six, we don't have to worry about this one here. We'll change that to equals to zero because we're just saying if there are club competitive memberships in the cart for a family and there's more than two but less than six, we're going to give them a discount. And that discount is going to be either X dollars or X percentage. So if you're doing it as dollar based, it's best that you go through and say, if club competitive is equals to three, then this is how much they're going to pay. If it's equal to four, this is how much they'll pay. If it's equal to five and then so on and so forth. If it's discount based, it's easier because you can just do the range. If it's between two and six, then give a discount of X percentage. Um, once you've done that, um, We've then got subscription discount amounts, so we don't need to worry about that because that's if you are setting up subscriptions, which can only be done at the, um, the upgraded level of just go subscription. Um, again, we have the display price settings, so alternative price um, or price range. So price range would be the best option here. 
and then add new benefits. So I guess the first benefit that's going to appear on the tile is discount for X number of family members. Uh, and then you've got this option down here, which is position that family membership will be shown. So by default, it's set as the first option. And to explain what this is, when we're looking at all those memberships we've got set up at the club, we're then going to have this extra one, which is family membership. So do you want that tile to appear first so people know there's family membership discount or do you want it to appear at the end? It's entirely up to you how you want to do that. The way that it works after you actually set up this tile is when a member clicks on it, it will then show them any members that are attached to them as a family. And they can select, say, this is Samantha, I'm going to select membership. Um, this is the membership I will select. And the memberships that I can see are those ones from that main screen. So club competitive, then I might select Sally. Sally's getting club competitive as well. So that's the way that it works for family membership. So you still, you get the discount when you get to the checkout and, but you still have to select the actual memberships from that main front screen. So there is an, uh, a dedicated guide on the, the family configuration. So I'll make sure that that comes over to your friend so you can distribute that. Brilliant. Thank you. Excellent. So um, I think that brings us now to the end of the session. It's just gone 7.30. Um, thanks ever so much, Sam. That was absolutely brilliant. Um, if anyone has any further questions, um, obviously you can email me directly at any time. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's got anything burning now. Um, if not, just thank you everyone for attending. We will be sharing the recording of this video as well so that you can watch it back or share it with other club um, committee members who are using the system. Um, but thank you everyone for attending and um, that brings us to the end. <laughs>